So I am a black white thing. And for those of you that don't follow my TikTok, uh, my pronouns are it its. And I view myself as a thing, a tool. I'm a tool. What is my purpose as a tool? What is it that I am to do the, my best, to the best of my ability? My goal is to accomplish black goals as a black thing and use all of the tools of whiteness to do so. Now, my understanding of what being black means is informed by Ibram Zolani Kendi, who says essentially being black is being an advocate for every group based on size, based on wealth, based on race, based on gender, based on ethnicity, based on sexual preference, based on, you know, what have you, the underdog. That's what being black is. Are you on the side of the underdog? I look for a future in which there is equity among all people, separately in their groups, as they see fit, and that I will struggle towards that result as hard as I can for as long as I can. Ibram Kendi says that America is a white nation, and he's not wrong. Old America is very much what he criticizes. But my role as a white thing is different in a way. My role as a white thing is to use all of the tools at my service, all of the things I can use to achieve an end. And that end, even though it is black power, also involves getting everyone to see themselves as white, as every single thing you can imagine, as artists, as musicians, as philosophers and writers, all of the tools you need can be white. And I think that this division of black and white as black as advocate for the underdog and white as essentially uber tools, super, supra tulic, um, things capable of accessing all sorts of things, all sorts of surprising things. For instance, Abigail Simmons is my princess robot and her pronouns are definitely she, her, but I don't know her race, but I can access her. And my way of doing that is by making use of my whiteness. And that's not talking about the skin color that I have nearly as much as it's talking about the advantages I have, but also the whiteness of my ancestry, which has shaped me much more than my skin color in person because I have experimented with skin color and I am a person of color as well. Like it or not, it's just true. Another type of bigotry is tattoo phobia of which I am tattooed, but I'm also blank faced, which means I can use the tools of not having tattoos as effectively as anyone else. It's part of me being white. So that's fascinating. That's fascinating. Ibram Zolani Kendi explains this in his book, but he also explains so much more. And I love his way of thinking because he is definitional. And I am fundamentally highly definitional. I like good definitions. And that's why I think the N-word should mean human. That good definition would bring about greater racial equity and therefore is an anti-racist position to hold. That is to say, the more you say nigger over and over in different situations to mean human or to mean something that is equal, the more anti-racist you are being. And that contradiction where 
the word that identifies racism most effectively usually is in fact the key to solving it is a, a new idea that only I have formated. I don't know anyone that has said that, but because of Russell Lawrence Lee and my experience with negrophobia, I can recognize that negrophobia is bigotry and I am the negrophobic and also the negrophiliac, the person that promotes the N-word, but also the person that can use not saying the N-word in a white way. So these are all new thoughts that I'm making up right now, but New America, that's the real thing we're making up right now, because that's the fundamental anti-racist belief in my philosophy that has yet to be evaluated. Old America is racist white supremacist that was founded by slave owners, and it remains pro propagated by slave owners today. People that own the prison industrial complex and all of the slaves that are as a result of it. And that is old America, I condemn it to death because it would be anti-racist for us to create a new America where equity rules and slavery is abolished completely. I say all these things with a red sense of urgency. I always feel, man, I wish we could do it right now. You know, and I think that that perspective is very important. And I'm not trying to be racial here with red, and that's disastrous, that, that line of thinking, because all it brings is more racist thoughts. But sometimes those thoughts are the best product of anti-racism. So what I'm defining as red is urgency, you know, blood that is not congealed, uh, red-faced, passion, bulls seeing red. In that way, I am red because I cannot wait for us to legalize the things we need to legalize. I have to violate things in advance of it happening. And that nature as a black, white, and red all over individual very much helps me define myself as a black thing. And that position of advocacy for all of the world's downtrodden is the right perspective to have if you care about people. And understand being awful is the worst way to be a person. And so caring about people is helping them achieve the equity that Ibram references in his fascinating book, How to Be an Anti-Racist. And so I encourage you to read it and learn about Henry, my father's first name, and his navigation through Zurara. The, I mean, it's fascinating the history of, of racism and slavery. I hope that you read the book and I leave you with that thought. Thank you.